In this video, we're going to complete example four, and we're going to learn how to simplify compound fractions. When you look at the examples, you might notice that compound fractions are basically fractions on top of fractions. We're actually going to be covering four different questions. Here you can see questions A and B, and then on the next slide, I have questions C and D. So what do we do in a situation where we have a fraction on top of another fraction. Well, we're going to turn our fractions into non-fractions. So in the case of question A, we're going to turn our fractions 1 over 5 and 2 over 5 into whole numbers. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to multiply them by something. I'm going to multiply the numerator by 5, and because I'm doing this, I have to multiply the denominator by the same number. I have to multiply it by 5 as well. Let's look at what happens when we do this. We'll start with our numerator. Our numerator is 3 plus 1 over 5, and we're multiplying this by 5. Now we have to multiply the whole expression by 5, so we need to put it in brackets. Looking at our denominator, we had 2 minus 2 fifths. We also need to multiply this whole expression by 5 as well. Now we've got two sets of brackets and we need to expand both sets of brackets. We do this when we multiply them by 5. So 5 times 3 is 15. And 5 times 1 fifth gives us 1. And the reason we get 1 is the 5s cancel each other out. So we get plus 1. Looking at our denominator now, 5 times 2 is 10, and 5 times 2 fifths, now the 5s are going to cancel each other out, leaving us with 2. So we get minus 2. Now 15 plus 1 is 16, and 10 minus 2 is 8, and 16 divide 8, or 16 over 8, is the same as 2. So this has turned out really nicely. Question A has simplified to the single number of 2. Now, most of you probably have figured out why I decided to multiply by 5. In case you haven't figured it out, it's because my denominators were 5 for both fractions. And when I multiplied them by 5, I cancelled those denominators and turned those fractions into whole numbers. So let's now move on to question B. I have to multiply the top and the bottom of my fraction by something. And what am I going to multiply it by? Well, whatever the denominators are, and they're both A. So I'm going to multiply the top of my fraction, my numerator by A, and my denominator by A as well. So we'll start with the numerator. The numerator is 1 plus 2 over A, and I'm multiplying this whole expression by a, so I need to put it in brackets. And then for my denominator, I had 3 over a, and since it's only one term, I don't need brackets, I'm just multiplying this by a. So let's expand the brackets at the top, like so. a times 1 is 1a, or just a. And then a times 2 over a, the a's will cancel, leaving us with just 2. So we get a numerator of a plus 2. Looking at our denominator, 3 over a times a, the a's are just going to cancel each other out, leaving us with 3. So our denominator is 3, and we get a plus 2 over 3, which cannot be simplified any further. All right, let's now move on to question C. Getting a little trickier now, we have four different fractions here, and there's a couple with a denominator of x, and there's a couple with a denominator of y. So I need to multiply by x to cancel out my x's, and I also need to multiply by y to cancel out the y's which means I need to multiply the top by xy, both x and y, as well as the bottom by both x and y. So what's going to happen 
in this situation? Well, looking at the top of my fraction, the numerator is 1 over y plus 1 over x. And we're multiplying this, we're multiplying 1 over y plus 1 over x by xy. So we've got to put this whole expression in brackets and multiply it by xy. Let's now focus on the bottom of the fraction, the denominator. I've got the expression 2 over y plus 2 over x. 2 over y plus 2 over x. And I'm multiplying this whole expression by xy as well. Now we just need to expand both sets of brackets. Okay, what do we get when we multiply xy by 1 over y? Well, first of all, those y's are going to cancel each other. So really, we're just multiplying x by 1. What does that give us? Well, x times 1 is just x. All right, now I also need to multiply xy by 1 over x. Now, what happens when we multiply these two together? Well, the x's are going to cancel. And then we're just multiplying y by 1. Now, y times 1 is just 1y or y. So that's my numerator done. Now let's multiply the denominator. What do I get when I multiply xy by 2 over y? Well, the y's are going to cancel each other, which means we're really just multiplying x by 2, which gives us 2x. We're now going to multiply xy by 2 over x. You'll find that the x's will cancel, and then y times 2 is 2y. So we get plus 2y below. Now I want to see if I can simplify this further. In order to do that, I need to factorize something. I'm going to factorize the denominator here. So I'm going to keep the numerator the same, x plus y, and I'm going to factor out that common factor of 2 for the denominator. 2 times x will give me 2x, and 2 times y will give me 2y. And now I can cancel out the x plus y above and the x plus y below, which leaves me with a fraction that has a 2 for the denominator. What do I put for the numerator? Well, not 0, 1. And for those who aren't sure why we put the number 1, well, what happens when you multiply something by 1? What happens if I multiply x plus y by 1? Well, it doesn't change. When you multiply things by 1, they remain the same. And now we can see when x plus y is cancelled, you're left with 1 over 2. Let's now move on to question D to finish off. I've got to think to myself, I've got to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by something, and it's got to be something that's going to cancel these denominators. We've got to cancel a plus 1, and we also need to cancel a. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both by a and a plus 1. And I'm going to do that at the top of my fraction and also at the bottom of my fraction. So let's take the top of my fraction here, which is 2 over a plus 1 plus 3. I'm going to put this in a set of brackets because I'm going to multiply this whole expression by a bracket a plus 1 close bracket. Okay, and I'm going to do the same for the denominator. Now the denominator was 1 over a plus 1 plus 2 over a. All right, so I'm taking this whole expression, I'm putting it in brackets, and I'm multiplying this also by a bracket a plus 1. Now at the moment it looks quite messy, but when we multiply them out, and we're going to basically expand these brackets above and below, it's going to turn out quite nice. Or reasonably nice. So if I take a bracket a plus 1 and multiply it by 2 over a plus 1, what's going to happen? Well, the a plus 1 under the fraction and in the brackets will cancel each other. 
leaving us with simply a times 2. That gives us just 2a. Next, when I multiply a bracket a plus 1 by 3, I'm going to just get 3 times a, a plus 1. That is our new numerator. Let's now look at the denominator. If I multiply a bracket a plus 1 by 1 over a plus 1, the a plus 1s will cancel, and a times 1 is just 1a or a. Next, when I multiply a bracket a plus 1 by 2 over a, this time the a's will cancel, and I simply get 2 times a plus 1. And this is our new denominator. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand these um, brackets. The, this set of brackets here, and I'm going to expand the set of brackets with the 2 and the a plus 1. Let's see what we get. So the 2a remains as 2a. 3a times a is 3a squared, plus 3a squared. And 3a times 1 is 3a. So we get plus 3a. And then for our denominator, the a remains as a. And then we get 2 times a, which is 2a. So a plus 2a. And then 2 times 1, which is 2. So plus 2. Now we can combine some like terms here. 2a plus 3a is 5a. So coming down here, we have 5a. And then we had our 3a squared. So 5a plus 3a squared. Over... And then a plus 2a is 3a. And plus 2 remains as plus 2. Now I'm quite sure I've simplified this as far as I can go. But just to be extra sure, I'd like to factorize this. And before I do that, I'd actually like to swap the 3a squared and the 5a get them to swap places and have 3a plus 2 below. 3a squared and 5a have a common factor of a. So I'm going to factor out that a. So a, and then I get a times 3a will give me 3a squared, and a times 5 will give me 5a. And then for my denominator, I have 3a plus 2. And I can't simplify this any further. If, if the denominator was 3a plus 5, then that would be really nice. They would cancel out both sets of brackets and we would be left with a, but, but we can't. So either one of these three responses would be perfectly fine. Personally, I prefer the factorized version because that just shows the marker that no more cancelling can be performed here. Anyway, that concludes our video on example four. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.